Hey there food lovers and welcome back to Nutri Life. Today we're not whipping up a storm in the kitchen, but we are cooking up something equally delicious, a healthy relationship with food. It's something I'm super passionate about, and I know a lot of you are too, so buckle up because we're diving into five essential tips that I've picked up on my own culinary journey towards a healthier and happier me. And hey, while you're here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join the Nutri-Life family for more awesome content just like this. Let's kick things off with the foundation of a good relationship with food mindful eating. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't mindful eating just a fancy way of saying chew your food? And you know what? You're not entirely wrong, but it goes beyond just chewing. It's about being present with your meal. Put down your phone, turn off the TV, and savor each bite. Notice the textures, the flavors, the aromas. It's like transforming your dining table into your own personal food lab. When you're distracted, you're more likely to overeat because your brain doesn't register that you're full. But when you eat mindfully, you give your body a chance to catch up with your stomach. You start to recognize those subtle cues that tell you, hey, I'm satisfied. It's like magic, but with more deliciousness. Engage all your senses. Take a moment to really look at your food. Appreciate the vibrant colors, the intricate textures. Inhale the aroma, letting it fill your senses. Then take a bite and focus on the flavors that dance on your tongue. Slow down your eating. Chew thoroughly and pause between bites. Mindful eating is about cultivating a deeper appreciation for the food that nourishes us. Trust me, once you start eating mindfully, you'll enjoy your food more and feel better. Remember, mindful eating is a journey, not a destination. Just try your best to bring your attention back to your meal and savor each bite. So next time you sit down for a meal, take a deep breath, put away distractions, and give your food the attention it deserves. You might be surprised by how this simple act can transform your relationship with food for the better. Now let's talk about what's actually on those plates, shall we? Just like a good recipe needs the right balance of ingredients, your meals should too. And no, I'm not talking about meticulously measuring every grain of rice. I'm talking about aiming for a good mix of protein, carbohydrates, and healthy fats. Think of it like this. Protein is the building block of our bodies. Carbs are the energy source and healthy fats keep things running smoothly. It's like the Avengers of nutrition, each playing a crucial role in keeping your body fueled and satisfied. Now, when I say carbohydrates, I'm not talking about the refined, processed kind that leaves you feeling sluggish. I'm talking about the good stuff. Whole grains, fruits, vegetables, the kind that provides sustained energy and keeps you feeling full and focused. And don't be afraid of healthy fats. They're essential for hormone production, cell function, and even help you absorb certain vitamins. Think avocados, nuts, seeds, olive oil, nature's little flavor bombs that also happen to be incredibly good for you. But here's the thing. Building a balanced meal doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need a culinary degree or a pantry full of exotic ingredients. Start simple. Think grilled chicken or fish with a side of roasted vegetables and quinoa. Or whip up a big salad with plenty of colorful veggies, some lean protein like chickpeas or tofu, and a drizzle of olive oil and lemon juice. One of my favorite tricks is to make meal prepping a breeze by roasting a big tray of veggies on Sunday and using them throughout the week in salads, grain bowls, or as a side dish. It's all about finding what works for you and your lifestyle. And hey, don't be afraid to get creative in the kitchen. Experiment with different flavors, cuisines, and ingredients. Cooking should be fun, and building a balanced plate is like creating a masterpiece on your plate. Remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about making conscious choices that nourish your body and make you feel your best. So go ahead and build yourself a plate that's as delicious as it is nutritious. All right, folks, let's get real for a second. How many times have you eaten out of boredom, stress, or just because it was time to eat, even though your stomach wasn't really rumbling? We've all been there. But here's the thing. Learning to listen to your body's natural hunger and fullness cues is key to developing a healthy relationship with food. Think of your hunger and fullness cues like a volume knob. When you're truly hungry, the volume is cranked up to 11, and your body is sending you clear signals. Your stomach might be growling, you might feel a little lightheaded or your energy levels might dip. That's your cue to fuel up. On the other hand, when you start to feel full, the volume gradually decreases. You might notice that your food doesn't taste as vibrant, you might feel a slight pressure in your stomach, or you might simply lose interest in eating. That's your body's way of saying, hey, I'm good. Thanks for the fuel. 
The problem is we often override these natural cues. We ignore our hunger because we're too busy, or we eat past the point of fullness because the food is just too darn delicious. But over time, this can throw our internal hunger and fullness signals out of whack, leading to overeating, weight gain, and a disconnect from our bodies. So, how do we get back in tune with our bodies? It starts with paying attention. The next time you eat, try to rate your hunger and fullness levels on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being ravenously hungry and 10 being uncomfortably full. Aim to start eating when you're at a 3 or 4 and stop when you're at a 7 or 8. Remember, it takes time for your brain to register that you're full, so slow down, savor each bite, and give your body a chance to catch up. And if you find yourself snacking out of boredom or stress, try to identify the underlying emotion and find a healthier way to cope whether it's going for a walk, calling a friend, or simply taking a few deep breaths. Learning to listen to your body takes practice, but it's one of the most valuable skills you can develop for a healthy relationship with food. Trust me, your body knows best. All right, let's talk about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, hydration. Now you might be thinking, babish, what does water have to do with a healthy relationship with food? And the answer is, my friends, everything. You see, water is like the unsung hero of the nutrition world. It's involved in pretty much every bodily function, from regulating body temperature to transporting nutrients to flushing out toxins. It's like the ultimate multitasker. But here's the thing, we often mistake thirst for hunger. Think about it. How many times have you reached for a snack when you were actually just dehydrated? It happens to the best of us. So how can you tell if you're truly hungry or just thirsty? Well, one easy trick is to simply drink a glass of water and wait about 15 to 20 minutes. If you're still feeling peckish, then by all means, grab a nutritious snack. But chances are that glass of water will have done the trick. Now I know what you're thinking. But babish, plain water is so boring, and you know what? You're not wrong. But here's the good news. There are tons of ways to make hydration more exciting. One of my favorite tricks is to infuse my water with fresh fruits and herbs. Think cucumber and mint, strawberry and basil, or even a squeeze of lemon or lime. It's like a mini spa day for your taste buds. Another great option is to sip on unsweetened herbal teas throughout the day. They're packed with flavor and antioxidants, and they're a great way to stay hydrated without any added sugar. And hey, if you're feeling really fancy, you can even whip up a batch of infused water with sparkling water and your favorite fruits. It's like a healthy homemade soda. Remember, staying hydrated is crucial for overall health and well-being, and it can even help you make healthier food choices. So, grab your favorite water bottle, fill it up, and let's raise a toast to hydration. All right, folks, it's time to talk about everyone's favorite F-word, food freedom. Because here's the thing, a healthy relationship with food is not about deprivation, restriction, or labeling foods as good or bad. It's about finding a balance that works for you and allows you to enjoy all foods in moderation. You see, food is more than just fuel. It's about pleasure, connection, and celebration. It's about sharing a meal with loved ones, indulging in a special treat every now and then, and experiencing different cultures through their cuisine. Now, I'm not saying you should go out and eat an entire pizza every night, but I am saying that it's okay to enjoy your favorite foods without the guilt. In fact, allowing yourself to indulge in moderation can actually prevent overeating and cravings down the line. Think about it. When you tell yourself you can't have something, it becomes even more desirable. But when you give yourself permission to enjoy all foods, it takes away the power from those forbidden foods. So, how do you find that balance? It's about listening to your body, honoring your cravings, and making conscious choices. If you're craving something sweet, have a small piece of dark chocolate or a scoop of your favorite ice cream. If you're in the mood for something savory, enjoy a slice of pizza or a burger, but maybe skip the fries and opt for a side salad instead. Remember, it's all about balance. One meal or one day of indulging won't derail your progress. What matters most is the bigger picture. So go ahead and treat yourself. Enjoy that slice of cake at a birthday party, savor that scoop of ice cream on a hot summer day, and relish those special meals with loved ones. Food is meant to be enjoyed, so ditch the guilt and embrace food freedom. So there you have it, folks. Five essential tips for building a healthy and happy relationship with food. Remember, it's all about mindful eating, balanced meals, listening to your body's cues, staying hydrated, and enjoying all foods in moderation without the guilt. Thanks for tuning in to NutriLife. If you found these tips helpful, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. 
And, as always, let me know in the comments down below what your biggest takeaway was and what you'd like to see in future videos. Until next time, happy eating!